All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for the caregiving and the holidays from Stress to Success webinar. Our webinar today is sponsored by Monticello West, Signature Point, and Walnut Place. We're actually communities that are managed by Life Care Services, an LCS company that serves over 140 communities across the nation and over 35,000 seniors. It's my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Lily Adrian. She has years of experience supporting caregivers who are caring for those with dementia. Throughout her career, she has served as a life enrichment director, a memory care specialist, a certified dementia care specialist, and an advanced grief facilitator. She earned her bachelor's of science and sociology and psychology from Southwest Baptist University. During this event, we will be recording. So if you want to turn your cameras off, if you don't wanna be recorded during the event and keep your uh, microphones on mute. Um, and I wanna thank Lily for joining us today. Thank you so much for letting me be here today. I love caregivers. I've been one. Um, I was the caregiver to my father who um, had um, Alzheimer's 12 years diagnosed. And I was the caregiver for my husband for a very short time. Um, he passed away very suddenly at the age of 54. And so I went through a time of about three weeks caring for him where my life was turned upside down. And so I know how grief affects us. Um, and I know the journey that you take um, every single day as a caregiver. So um, one of the things that what we're going to key in on today is how do we go from stress to success? How do we decide and make the choice of uh, being successful during the holidays, enjoying it, not feeling guilty, and, uh, and enjoying those days with our loved ones? It's really tough. This is a stressful time for people that don't have somebody to care for. So for those of you that have someone you're caring for, having to change traditions, uh, having to make sure that everyone is happy, we've got to learn how do we not feel that pressure. So I'm going to share with you um, some thoughts on that. <clears throat> Want to make sure everybody can see it. There we go. I'm going to admit Rebecca. You guys are a great group today. Thanks for spending time with us. Okay, from stress to success, handling the holidays as a caregiver. We want holidays to be meaningful, don't we? We all do. We start back in, you know, right at Thanksgiving, decorating our Christmas trees and um, wrapping gifts and and making sure that our shopping list is is accurate and current with everything that everybody wants from us. I was watching a silly Christmas movie last night, and uh, the crux of the movie was a group of moms that said, I'm going on strike during Christmas. I'm not going to do this anymore. And uh, it was quite funny to watch family members go, but wait a minute, mom, I've got the football team going, coming over for a, for a, a cookie bake party or, uh, you know, honey, I need you to, to do a Christmas uh, buffet for my office. <clears throat> and, um, you know, but no help extended. So how do we get people to help pick up pieces for us? Uh, we want it to be meaningful. We want it to be an enriching time for us. And also when we're working with our loved ones with dementia, we want it to be meaningful for them. So how do we make this happen? First of all, we need to maintain or adapt family rituals. OK, um, helps it helps all family members feel a little bit of a sense of belonging and family identity for the person with Alzheimer's. This link with a familiar past is reassuring. They they like structure. 
Uh, they want to be reassured that everything is as normal as can be. But in order to find that proper sense of belonging and family identity, there's some things we've got to do. We've got to find the right balance. And the right balance is not us taking all the burden. I remember very clearly after both my parents passed away and after my husband passed away, I had to make it very clear to my children and to others that I was celebrating Thanksgiving with, that was that first big holiday, that I'm not here to make sure everybody's okay. Uh, I'm not here to assure you that I'm okay and everything's going to be good. That's your job. So we've got to find that right balance. We've got to prepare the guests that are going to be around our loved one with dementia. We need to let them know that, uh, you know, things are different. We may have to help feed them. Uh, they may have issues with toileting while they're there in, their, in your home. Um, you know, there's a lot of things. They need to take a break. They need to rest. The noise bothers them. There's a lot of things that we need to make sure guests that are not used to being around someone with any form of dementia is prepared. And then we need to prepare the person that has the dementia. Uh, <clears throat> so how do we find a balancing act? Uh, we've got to, first of all, set our own limits and be very clear about that to others. You don't have to be the one to make sure that you live up to their expectations. Your situation's different now, right? Have your loved one observe you preparing and getting ready for this holiday. Um, observing will get them familiar with what's going on and will spark some of those memories from the past and it will bring them a lot of joy. Prepare quiet distractions to use, such as looking over pictures, going for a walk, talking about the people that are gonna be coming. Make sure there is a quiet space. Wherever you're having your gathering, make sure there's a quiet space for the person to rest and have time to recharge. Remember, their life is totally different now. And uh, we've got to respect that in, uh, for dignity's sake. And consider simplifying the holidays around the home. Consider a smaller dinner. Consider someone else bringing it. Consider ordering it out and bringing it in. There are some things you can do to alleviate your being totally responsible for everything. How do you prepare the guests for these holidays? Explain to them that the person with Alzheimer's does not always remember what is accept, expected and acceptable. Uh, it's so important for them to understand that we need to recognize this as a disease and we don't let the disease define who the person is. They are still the person that we love. Uh, but the disease has made their actions and reactions different. Give them some examples, as, we, as I mentioned earlier, of behaviors that may take place, such as eating food with their fingers, or perhaps even needing assistance. You know, I can remember clearly when my mother was in an assisted living and she had tremors in her hands. And so she had a difficult time eating with a fork and she needed a larger serving spoon, a little bit bigger than a, a regular uh, dinner spoon. And uh, so what I did was I bought one for her and she sat with three or four other ladies and I made sure there was one for each one of them. I made sure that they had um, these kind of sparkly, glitzy little uh, alligator clips that they could attach their napkin to the front of their shirt so that um, they weren't embarrassed if they dropped food on it. Plus the glitz and the, and the shine was fun and, and they got a big kick out of it. So bring in the rest of the group so that your loved one is not totally embarrassed. If this is the first visit since uh, the person that, that has the disease um, is going to be involved in something of a gathering with many relatives, that's when I think it's so important for you 
to uh, show them pictures, um, let guests know that they may not remember who they are um, and that they can gently remind them who they are, but they don't need to put them on the spot. They don't need to embarrass them. Um, that's a very difficult place to be when it's your daughter or your granddaughter and you don't know who they are. You don't know their name. I'm a, I have a real struggle with names. I will never forget your face, but I might forget your name. And I know sometimes it's embarrassing for me. So imagine having all the confusion going on around you with relatives that you haven't seen in a while. So let relatives know they may not recognize you. Reintroduce yourself to them if, it, if they want to know who you are. Um, but if you, as the caregiver, as the daughter, as the wife, can show them pictures ahead of time, talk about the past ahead of time, do some Christmas memory moments ahead of time, this is going to make it a little bit easier with that transition of being around so many people. Explain the disease to the folks that are going to be there. Memory loss is the result of a disease, it's not intentional, obviously, uh, that the meaningfulness of the moment together matters more than what the person remembers and that we must concentrate on the person and not the disease. It's so important for people to understand that we don't want the disease to define who they are. We have to dig deep sometime, don't we, as caregivers to find that sweet spot in the lives of those that we love but they are there and we must do what we can to find those sweet moments. We need to prepare the person with Alzheimer's as I mentioned earlier by showing them pictures, by having conversations with them, explaining uh, to them the connections between those that are gonna be there and keep the memory impaired person's routine as close to normal as possible. If they live in a community, you're gonna bring them home, you're gonna take them out to eat. Don't do it two or three hours early. Try to get as close to the meal time as possible so that there's not that lapse of time of wondering. And, you know, I'm now in another unfamiliar place. Uh, during the hustle and the bustle of the holiday, guard against fatigue, find a time for adequate rest. That is so important. You know, we, we have a tendency to feel like we need to constantly be engaging with those with dementia. And yes, we do want to engage with them, but we want to learn to engage with them correctly. And all of us need an opportunity to sit back, kick our feet up, read the paper, take a little nap. Uh, you know, at 68 years old, I enjoy those little quick five minute naps too. So let's remember to give them opportunities of rest. Caregivers may chase, all of us are facing a new challenge uh, with COVID, obviously, uh, particularly those with underlying chronic conditions, they're more likely to become seriously ill. And so we need to be conscientious of that. Um, Certainly enforce proper safety tips when you're with your loved ones and other family members um, with masks, knowing that they've not come in contact with anyone that's had COVID. Check those things out with your families. Um, you know, regardless of whether you are vaccinated or you like it or you don't, or you believe in it or you don't, please use safety measures when you are with those that you love uh, because a cold can turn into something very, very dangerous if somebody gets the flu um, or an upper respiratory infection or COVID. So uh, please be very concerned and cautious about that. Celebrate where peace can abide. If your loved one lives in an assisted living or memory care community, it might be up to the family to bring the celebration where they are without feeling any guilt. Now I'm going to let you know right now, I have a rule of thumb. You can take any trip you want to take, any trip you want to take, but I don't want you taking a guilt trip. Please keep that in mind. You don't need to feel guilty about anything that you're doing when you're caring for someone that you love. When you leave them, go home and celebrate the holidays with your own immediate family. If they can't get out, don't feel like 
you can't do anything to celebrate. Perhaps it means celebrating a day early. They're not going to recognize the day. I'm doing Christmas with my children this year on December 23rd. And I got a lot of stuff to get done between now and December 23rd. But it's being together as a family. It's not the date that matters to the person with the disease. And then you can walk away and you can enjoy time with the rest of your family, whether it means going on a trip, uh, you know, spending the night with your grandchildren, having family come in and stay with you. Don't feel guilty about it. It's okay. Guilt can't play any part at all of your holiday plans. Avoid unneeded conflict. Let sleeping dogs lie. I know that it's tough when you have siblings. I had four siblings when I was taking care of my mother and my father. And everyone that didn't live here knew how to take care of my parents better than I did. But they weren't there to help with taking care of them. And they weren't really even wanting to, some of them, right? And I know you experienced this, but during the holidays, try to let things be a little bit calm. Don't bring up things that are going to cause issues. Uh, try to spend the day as, as free from conflict as possible. It's tough to do, but trust me, it's not the time to push that little button. Um, be clear about your energy level. Accept the need to adapt. Let family members know that your caregiving duties are keeping you very busy and that you only have so much energy for the holidays, preparing, giving someone else the responsibility of hosting, perhaps. Um, make it clear you're not there to keep everybody up. You're there to try to bring joy to the moments with the loved one that you're caring for. Um, and you got to speak up in order to have that taken care of. Now's the time to share your wish list. Have any of you stopped long enough to think about what you need as a caregiver? Respite could be one of those things. How do you get respite care? You say to someone when they ask you, I'm so proud of you and I'm so grateful for what you're doing. What can I do for you? Now they've asked the question and it's your responsibility to pull that little list out of your back pocket. Keep it in your pocket. When they ask the question, you need to give them an answer. If they weren't expecting an answer, that's their problem, not yours, right? So it can mean that they need to come by and take care of your loved one and play dominoes with them or have lunch with them while you get out and do shopping or you get out and go uh, find a book to read, you know, at Barnes and Noble and just relax. Maybe you need some home repairs done. Have you ever thought about the fact that simple, simple things like changing light bulbs, I had a guy coming in and checking a water leak for me the other day. And lo and behold, in the closet where the water leak was, the light bulbs went out the night before. So I had them sitting right there waiting for him because I don't do well with going up high and unscrewing those little bolts and getting a light fixture down. Let people know what you need. Maybe you need grab bars put up in the bathrooms. Uh, or there's a mile, you know, a mile high pile of, of junk in the garage that needs to go to the dump. Clean it out the garage for you. Maybe it's the kitty litter box. Hey, would you change the kitty litter box for me? Would you pick up medications for me? The best Christmas gift ideas for caregivers. I want you to take a minute and I want you to think about it. So you're gonna to have to come off of mute for just a second. And I want you to name some gifts that you would gratefully be receiving if someone offered them to you. Sharon, I saw you came off of mute. So tell me what you think. Oh, sorry. I didn't really mean to say anything. I just was- Okay, that's fine, oh, that's yes. fine. <laughs> Does anybody else have any ideas? What would be some things that you would love to have gifted to you as a caregiver? Actually, I do have something to say. Okay, uh, well, good. A few years ago, um, basically, I decided to just tell my 
to my husband and brother that I didn't want to do gifts anymore. So I get gifts for my mom. She's the one I'm caring for um, because she doesn't understand my need to reduce stress in the holidays. So I, right. make sure, I make sure I get her gifts, but I don't get gifts for anybody else. And um, it took me a little while to get past the guilt of that. Um, but I think I'm mostly there now, past the guilt. I think that's wonderful. And you know what? As adults, that's just one less stressful thing that we have to think about, isn't it? Yeah. You know, when you've got little children and grandchildren, it's a little different. But when you've got grown adults, it's not necessary. I'm proud of you that you did that. Very proud of you. Does anybody else have something that they would love to be gifted to them as a caregiver? What about a gift certificate for a massage or a facial or a manicure? Or how about an opportunity just to spend the whole day fishing or walking in the outdoors, going out to White Rock, finding a bench and a good book, just doing nothing. Maybe you want to go home and crawl back in your bed, right? Those might be very good. I was going to say, I think that if somebody would come in and want to clean the take the opportunity to clean their house for the day, do the laundry, do stuff that um, take stuff off their plate that they need to get done. I think Absolutely. Like that. I think that's a great idea. One day of somebody just coming in and there you go, a housekeeper once a month. Keeping up with your own home doesn't get any easier when you add the component of having someone that you care for. Uh, I have a one bedroom, one bath condo. I went from three bedrooms, three baths to one bedroom, one bath about two years ago. And do you know, I still love to have somebody come in. And sometimes it's my youngest daughter. She loves to clean and just do those things that are ceiling fans and, and, you know, dust that you don't think about and, you know, just making it smell good. And you leave the house and you come home and everything's the trash is out and that feels good you know, find, find somebody that's willing to do that for you. I think that's a great idea, Karen. Very good idea. What about legal assistance? Even if your life is relatively uncomplicated, getting older brings a lot, uh, a, a lot to the table when it gets down to legal affairs and getting them in order. You need to make sure you've got a power of attorney, you got a medical representative, a DNR orders, if you choose to do that, a will, a host of other legal matters that need to be put in place. That doesn't happen for free. And it does not, it, and it is not always straightforward, but make sure that you have those things taken care of. And maybe it's someone that can download the forms for you and help you find uh, you know, avenues to get it taken care of. Physical and emotional support are what most caregivers need the most. Um, and that's why uh, Theresa is uh, so kind to, to provide today for you as a caregiver, because this is a very stressful time of the year. But physical help to care for senior loved ones includes help with daily tasks, decision making, preparing meals, running errands, performing chores, and emotional support to deal with the stress. Um, Support groups are just vital, uh, regardless of the community that you're in um, today, please make sure that you become involved in their support groups, because that is going to be more valuable to you than anything you can imagine. How to ask for help. How do you do that? Caregiver burnout is real, and I'm not going to stress to you enough on how important it is for you to ask for help. Why shouldn't you ask for help? Let's address that first. What's the reason that says, oh, I shouldn't ask for help? Of course you should ask for help, especially from your family or your friends. There is nothing in the world wrong with that. In order for you to survive, you're going to have to do that. You've got to recognize that you need help. You've got to make specific requests. Don't just say, well, whatever you want to do, no, remember, list in back pocket. You've got to have that list in your back pocket. 
know that you will likely have to ask for help more than once. So while you're at it, why don't you just say, do you mind doing this for me, you know, once a month, just come in and, and, you know, doing little small repairs. I'll keep a little running list going. I've got a friend that does that for me, um, in fact, and it just feels good to know you've got somebody that's willing to do that. Plan that your request for help will be ongoing. Just accept that right now up front. Put that in your mind. I know that I'm going to need help throughout this entire process. And once you grab a hold of it, you won't feel any guilt in asking for it. And that, and keep that list in your back pocket, like I mentioned. Be prepared to accept those verbal gifts when asked. Speak up. When someone, try, I, I am so bad about when somebody says to me, um, let me pay for your dinner. Oh, no, 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 you're not going to do that. Why not? Let him pay for your dinner. You know, I'm going to uh, stop by and pick up your kids on the way home from school because I'm picking mine up anyhow. Oh, I hate for you to do that. Why do you hate for them to do that? They offered it. So graciously say thank you. I had to tell somebody that the other day. I said, don't argue. Just say thank you to someone that wants to share a little bit of love with you too. Caregiving is often a 24-7 job and everyone needs a break. Getting away can give you perspective and it can remind you that there's a world outside and it can take you from stress to success to have a little bit of time off. And do you know what else it does? It takes the loved one that you're caring for from stress to success because they're going to feel that tension no longer there with you. When we truly care for ourselves, it becomes possible to care for more profoundly about, our, about other people. The more alert and sensitive we are to our own needs, the more loving and generous we can be towards others. <laughs> Laughter is inner jogging. That's my two grandchildren. And they were just having so much fun we got to do a lot of inner jogging. There's a wonderful book out, and this is my information. If there's ever a time that you need me, jot this information down. Um, make sure that you realize you can reach out to me at any given time. Um, I'm available. Um, you know, if you're wanting to just chat for a few minutes, I'm not going to charge you for that. I mean, I like being available to caregivers. So please open yourself up to asking me to chat with you. It's okay. Uh, so there's that contact information. But there's a great book out. Hang on just a second. There's a wonderful book out called Undress Your Stress. Um, I order them all the time because I give them the way. I give them away at conferences or webinars like this. And I'm going to give one away today. So, um, Theresa, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down a number. And this number is going to be between 1 and 10. And this is only for the caregivers, okay? And I want you to jot down a number. And I'm going to find out who's the closest to what I've chosen, okay? Do you want them to put it in the chat? Uh, they can put it in the chat. That's a great idea. So put it in the chat. And I, I thought that I had one of the books with me. I actually have several of them packaged up like this because I'm sending out six of them today um, for other events that I've done in the last several days. So I want to be able to give someone a book called Undress Your Stress. It's a hysterical book. It's a book that makes you stop and realize it's okay to waste time. We find ourselves chasing time. We got to get it done. We got to make sure it's all okay. Do we though take time to just waste a moment? We need to. And like I said, we all need a little bit of inner jogging. So let me see. Uh, I've got the chat open. So if y'all want to type in your number that you're thinking. Geez. Yeah, I don't see the, okay, yeah, all right. 
Sharon, Rebecca, Evelyn, if y'all want to type in a number in the chat bot. Please do. I'm gonna, and then I'm going to write down your numbers. Or you can just yell them out at me if you want to. Sharon, what's the number you've come up with? You're on mute. You got to come off of mute. Okay, yeah, I thought of five. Sharon is a five. I think that it should, it's one through 10, correct? Yes, one through 10. Rebecca, and see, I can't to... see the I can't see the chat box for some reason. So, okay, I'll do monitor you see it. the numbers okay. in them? So Rebecca is saying seven. Rebecca, okay. Evelyn, you want to give us a number? Evelyn, what's the number you want to come up with? And you're on mute, so if you're trying to tell us, we can't hear you. Okay, how about Nan from Monticello? So the rest of our cells are team, so it's, it's... It's Sharon, Rebecca, or Evelyn? Yes. Okay, did Evelyn come up with one in the box, in the chat box? No, she hasn't. Okay, all right. Okay, well, since we've got two, my number was eight. So it looks like Rebecca is the one that won that book. But I'm going to go ahead and send one to Sharon. Oh, and I'm going to send good. one to Evelyn. Because all three of you need it. It's just a really fun book. Okay, so I'm going to send one to each of you. So this is what I need you to do. I need you to get to Theresa your address, or you have my email address if you took it off of the uh, off of the the PowerPoint. I can give it to you right now. It's um, L A Adrian. And let me just go back here. Hang on a second. Well, I won't do it that way. Okay trying to get this back off and I can't seem to do that. There we go. It's L A Adrian, A D R I A N 1953 at yahoo.com. So if you will email me your address, I will get that off to you in the next few days. I'm not sure how many books I have available right now. I just ordered a few more. And so if you don't get it for several days, it's because I was out of the book, but you will love it when you get it. Um, and I am so grateful, Theresa, that you gave me this opportunity to be here today. Uh, please remember that I'm available to you. Email me if you wanna talk, if you wanna do a Zoom visit, if you wanna chat, I'll be happy to give you my phone number also. Um, but I want you all to have a blessed, holiday season. And uh, remember to undress your stress. Find a way to, uh, to bring some joy to yourself. That's very important. Theresa, I'll pass it back to you. I, can I ask a question? Yes, you sure can. On the slide where you had your email and your um, phone number, there was something else like a web address. Yes. And I didn't get that. Okay, hang on a second and let me see if I can pull that up because I don't know it by heart, sorry. Uh, but give me one second. Let me, uh, oh, hang on a second. I'm gonna have to bring it back up. While you're bringing that up, Sharon and Rebecca, I do have the addresses that you submitted when you uh, registered, so we can get those over to to Lily. I okay. And I'm gonna I'm gonna copy and paste this web address, and it gives you. Um, hang on one second here. It gives you when I'm having other trainings and classes. I teach dementia training for family caregivers and for professionals. Um, the state of Texas now requires uh, anybody that works 
you know, hands on with someone with any form of dementia to take eight hours of dementia training a year. And so I teach that class. So rest assured that the folks that that are caring for your loved one, they are um, trained, okay? Uh, because they're required to be trained. There's that uh, web address, and that's my bridge of time uh, training. And I, I put articles on there. I put my newsletter on there. Um, it's a way to communicate with me, and I'll be more than happy to get back with you. But there again, if you've got my email address, I check my emails several times a day and would be more than happy to get back with you and set a time where we can visit. Any other questions? Oh, yeah, there you go. yeah, Ella. Lily. This is Nancy yes. McCarthy. Could you let yeah. Could you let them know that you do our support group here? Yes, and, that's and, just and exactly. The, and, the, and the day the day that you do it in the month, they may I they will might want to join. That's great. Yes, I do the support groups at Monticello West once a month. The next one is going to be actually on December 28th. It's at 6.30 in the evening. And if you'll just get a hold of uh, Lisa or anybody from Monticello West, they'll hook you up and, and get you onto the Zoom invite. Um, but yes, December 28th, it's always the fourth Tuesday evening of the month. And I'd love for any of you to join us. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, Theresa, thank you. Thank you, Lily. I appreciate it. So we will um, be, we recorded this. So uh, the, your contact at one of the communities with whom you registered for will reach out to you and provide you with a link so that you could go back and watch it. And if there's any slides that you wanted to check out again, you're more than welcome to. So you should be receiving a follow-up later. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having it. Bye. Happy holidays, everybody. You too. Happy holidays.